everybody, I am Jared Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to how I use DNA to find my father, and what happened when I did by vlogging through history, specifically the VTH Extra channel. Now, I'm quite excited about this because I'm good friends with Chris. We hung out recently in Denver, and we spent three, four days doing all sorts of stuff all around Denver. And as well, I know Chris is actually a professional genealogist himself, and he's done a good amount of videos about genealogy and he does a lot of reaction videos and I kind of was thinking you know what maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea I'll do a reaction on uh, Chris's video so I thought this one would be a great one to do it is kind of a long video 28 minutes and 8 seconds so hopefully I won't have too many things to cut off cut him off and say you know <laughs> I probably will but you know I, I like to ramble but I won't ramble too much let's go ahead and just jump on into it hey everybody uh, this is gonna be something a little different than anything I've ever really done here on YouTube before. Uh, it never really seemed like the right thing to do for my history channel, but this seems like the kind of place to share this story. I've never really shared my full story before when it comes to a, a big part of who I am. And that's the story of finding out who my father was. Uh, it's gonna take a little while, so bear with me. And my, my purpose in sharing this story uh, is not to ask anybody to feel sorry for me or to have sympathy for me because there's nothing to feel sorry for. I've had an amazing life so far. I've, I have an amazing family, and I wouldn't trade the family that I have for anything. Uh, so I'm very content with my life, and I don't share this for any of those reasons other than to give some people hope, first of all, uh, and maybe to let some people know that maybe you're not alone if you've had a similar story to mine. Uh, so here we go. This is my story. So first, a little bit of background. I was born in 1977, the day after my mom's 17th birthday. By the time my mom was 20 years old, she had remarried to the man who was my stepfather, Dave, uh, who from my earliest memories had always been my father. I called him dad. Uh, I didn't know any different. I thought he was my dad. I had no reason to think he wasn't. I had his last name and everything. It was only as I got a little bit older, and I think I was seven or eight years old, um, and I wondered why um, he was listed as stepfather on some intake forms for a hospital visit that I made. And I started to realize that something was a little different for me than for my sister, who was Dave's daughter. Uh, when I was eight years old, my mom left, and I went to live with my maternal grandparents. And so I never really had an opportunity to have a conversation with my mom about my background, about my my parentage. Um, my grandparents were only in their 30s when I was born. Wow. My grandma was 34, my gran grandpa was 38, and so most people that I knew called my grandparents, my mom and dad, and I never corrected them because as far as I was concerned, that's who they were. They were my parents. Uh, my uncles were my brothers. Uh, my youngest uh, uncle, the one who just passed away last fall, was only six years older than me. So I'm curious, is that is the Maori name then from your mom or from your stepdad? I, I, I wonder if maybe he'll mention that. Uh, it was my senior year of high school when I was 17 years old that I began what has become a lifelong obsession for me, which is the study of my family history. And by this point, my mom had actually moved back home uh, to Ohio. And so it wasn't long. Is that Chris? He looks so different there. That's crazy. <laughs> before this combination of my mom back at home and me being interested in my family background that led me to the question, who's my father? And my mom put me off for a few days, but she said, we'll talk about it. And so we sat down and we finally had that talk where she told me the identity of the man that she was sure was my biological father. Was sure was his biological father. Is that a little bit of a nod to... Maybe he wasn't actually the one she thought he was, or the one that she thought was his biological father. Maybe he wasn't. The crazy part was I knew the guy. I uh, had gotten my first job at 16 at a place called Good and Plenty Pizza, which is right down the street from my house. Good and Plenty. If anyone else is a Parks and Rec person, I'm sure as soon as he said that, it's like Good and Plenty. And the guy that she said was my father was a guy who came. Oh, it's food and stuff. I totally got that backwards. <laughs> <laughs> good and plenty is the uh candy yeah it's the candy that's where i got it from whoops 
came in every uh, Wednesday night as a part of this group of guys who were into uh, old cars and stuff like that. And so I knew him. I served him food all the time. And I had no reason to believe that she was making it up or that she was wrong. Uh, so I began attempts to contact this guy. At one point, I actually wrote him a letter and sent pictures of him and said, hey, I'm your son. And uh, Never heard a thing. A couple years go by, and one night, his eldest son gives me a call. And I hear him on the phone, and his voice very similar to mine. And he introduced himself as my brother. He said, you know, I, my dad told me about all this stuff, and he said it's not true, but I think it probably is. And... Uh, he told me that our, his father had shown him the letter that I wrote and insisted that I was wrong, that that the timeline was off, and that he had broken up with my mom before she got pregnant. And uh, But nevertheless, this guy believed that he was probably my brother, and so we figured out a time to meet, and we sat down together and talked, and we had a great chat. Uh, and for as, as far as I was concerned, I had met my brother for the first time, and eventually, hopefully, I'd meet my father as well. And over the next 10 years, I lived my life believing this man was my father and this guy was my Okay, I'm pretty sure it's going to get to a point he realizes that he probably did a DNA test, and then his, who he thought was his brother, this new guy, I'm guessing didn't match. My brother. I went on research trips to Tennessee, tracing my family tree through that line that I believed was my paternal line. I even went to the funeral of the woman that I believed was my grandmother. Uh, that was my life. All the while, in the back of my mind, I'm wondering, why doesn't this guy just acknowledge I'm his son? What's going on here? Is it really true? And it was only an advance in DNA technology that started to help me get the answers. And it led me down a very different path. About 10 years ago, uh, actually, it's been longer than 10 years ago now. It's been, gosh, uh, about 15 years ago. Ancestry.com started offering what was called a Y chromosome DNA test. Now, the markers in your Y chromosome DNA are only passed down through the male line. And so that means that my father's father's father has the same Y chromosome DNA that I have. And any other direct male line descendants of that man are going to have the same DNA. So my father's father's father, any other sons and grandsons and great grandsons, direct male line are going to have the same Y chromosome. Yep. Now, I knew several of the male members of my suspected father's family. and I was good friends with some of them. And so I asked one of my suspected father's male cousins to do a Y chromosome DNA test. And I did one and we submitted them. They weren't even close. The man could not possibly be my father. So there I was, 30 years old, completely clueless about who the identity of my father was, and honestly, pretty much hopeless that I was ever going to find out. My mom had moved away. Um, long story that I'll get into another time. I didn't really have an opportunity to talk to her about it. But about a year after I did that test, I got a match on Ancestry.com for two other people who shared the same Y chromosome DNA. The crazy thing was they were in eastern Kentucky. They were both direct male line descendants of a man named David Snowden Jr. who had settled in eastern Kentucky after the Revolutionary War. Now here's what's crazy about that. My maternal line goes through eastern Kentucky. My mom's, uh, grand, my mom's father, the, the man who raised me, the only father I had really known growing up, um, was from Kentucky. And so here now I'm finding out that my male line is from Kentucky too. It was crazy. But it made a little bit of sense because the, the place where I live in Northeast Ohio, uh, I live very close to the town mm -hmm. of Niles, Ohio, which is where my, grand, my maternal... I guess if you're talking East Ohio, even if it's Northeast Ohio, I mean, that's not too far from Kentucky. My grandfather grew up. Um, and Niles has a ton of Kentucky roots because there's a fire brick company, the Niles Fire Brick Company, that actively recruited workers from a brickyard in a town called Olive Hill, Kentucky. And so there are literally thousands of people uh, in my area in Northeast Ohio who have Eastern Kentucky roots. So it wasn't a big stretch, but it did narrow down the potential pool of 
people who could be my father to people with the last name of Snowden, whose roots were in eastern Kentucky. So now I had my first clue to who my father was. Now, one thing that I'm wondering here is how much was he matching these two YDNA matches? Which it's really interesting for one, because back then, like 15 years ago, or I think he said it was a couple years. So even if it was 10 years ago, there weren't a whole lot of DNA testers and there were even fewer YDNA test testers. Granted back then, also earlier, there were a lot more YDNA testers before autosomal DNA testing, but the Y DNA testing was also kind of limited. So either way is just kind of a DNA, you know, junky, groupy, whatever. I don't know, a, a DNA addict. I don't know. Basically, you know, I'd be really curious to see how much was he actually matching on the Y for one, how many markers did he test and how many markers was he matching versus these two and how many markers were they matching if he knew. So now the detective work begins. I, I started by knowing that my father's family had probably been part of that same mass migration from Kentucky uh, to Northeast Ohio in the 1930s and 1940s. And soon enough, I discovered there was one family of Snowdens who came from Eastern Kentucky and settled in our area. One family makes it really easy. <laughs> and in fact, they had actually lived as neighbors to my maternal grandfather in the Niles Fire Brick Company homes. Mm -hmm. So I was already on to something. And I traced that family back to that same David Snowden Jr. that the other Y chromosome matches had also traced their line back to. And it, it turned out there were in fact only four men who could possibly have been my biological father. There was a man and his brother who were my grandpa's age. And then the one man had two sons who both happened to go to my mom's high school. One was the same age as my mom and one was a couple years older. So as far as I was concerned, it had to be one of those two brothers That's that went likely. to my mom's high school. So I focused on those two sons. So through some internet searching, uh, I found an email address for the older of those two brothers. I sent him a message, explained the situation, uh, told him what was going on, asked him if he knew my mom. He said he remembered my mom from high school, but that she was actually closer to his younger brother's age. And I should probably reach out to the younger brother. So that's what I did wasn't so easy to find that younger brother, but in my process of asking questions and reaching out, that brother got word about my search and late one night he called me. I don't know how he got my number. I don't even remember the details of it, but he told me, yeah, it's possible I could be your biological father. And he agreed to a paternity test that would confirm it. I knew, I knew I had finally found my dad. And it took some time to get the test done. A uh, couple of weeks go by as I'm waiting for the test results to come in. You can imagine how agonizing that was yeah. as I'm sitting there just waiting for what I knew was gonna be a positive test. This guy said he, he could be my father. He was sure that it was possible. And uh, after 30 years of not knowing who my father was, of asking questions and wondering, I was sitting in my office at the church on a Wednesday morning when I got the email that the results had come in. He was not my father. I was devastated. I was sure this guy was my father. He was wet, ready and willing to acknowledge that he was my father. It was all going to be figured out. It was all making sense. Everything made sense. The Y DNA matched. So I knew that my father was a part of that family. This man acknowledged he could be my father. How could he not be? Now, once I'd gotten over the shock of those results, I remember. Wait, was it his father? The phone conversation I had with the man who had just failed the paternity test. I told him the, the name of the man that my mother had told me was my biological father that I believed was my father for years. And he, he said something that at the time didn't make a lot of sense to me. But now in hindsight, as I thought about it, it came back into my mind. And he said, yeah, I remember him. He said, I remember my older brother. 
getting into a fight with him over your mom. Oh, wait a second. The older brother, the one who had said, oh, yeah, I remember your mom, but he was, he was my brother's age. Why would he have gotten into a fight with my mom's ex-boyfriend over my mom? A man that she had broken up with just weeks before I was conceived. Now it was starting to make a little more sense to me. Maybe it was the older brother, after all. After speaking with my mom, who was, let's just say my mom was less than upfront about her life. Now, this is a story for another day, and I love my mom with all my heart, and I would do anything for her. Um, my mom, as a teenager, dealt with a lot, and there were some things in her life that are not for me to share uh, that she went through in her younger, younger time, uh, her younger years that led her by the time she was a teenager to um, make some really bad choices, let's say. And among those bad choices was a tendency as a teenager to be rather promiscuous to the point where well, she wasn't really willing to just be upfront and acknowledge that there was more than one possibility of who could be my father. And I'm not passing judgment on my mother. Um, as I said, I, I love my mom, and we all make bad decisions when we're teenagers. We all make them as adults. Um, what's done is done, and it's in the past, and I, I don't hold any of that against her. Um, but she acknowledged, okay, you know what? The older brother's a possibility, too. So there it was, back to square one, back to another possibility about who my father was. But the problem, it seemed, was that the older brother wasn't nearly as interested in volunteering to take a paternity test as the younger brother had been, or even acknowledging the possibility that he could be my father. Now, one thing that I should mention when it comes to him talking about the different tests, because he was talking about why DNA tests, now he's talking about a paternity test. There are different kinds of DNA tests that you can take. So for one, you have your Y chromosome, which is something that men have, and you can do specifically Y chromosome DNA testing, which is what he did. And then that will usually look at the STR markers, short tandem repeats, but there are more in-depth testing for Y chromosome as well. Another type of testing is mitochondrial DNA testing, and that's gonna test specifically your mom's mom's line. So that's not something that's gonna be useful to him here because that's his mom's mom's line, whereas he's trying to find his father so you know his mom's mom's line is not going to help but then you also have your autosomal dna and autosomal dna is all of your other dna you know your chromosome one chromosome chromosome two three four all that stuff when it comes to the paternity tests, there are a few different ones you can take but you can take autosomal paternity tests that will give you an idea of is this person actually the father or are they just a relative which it's different than doing like a y a paternity test because a Y paternity test, you could end up matching your uncle or your brother or other people at almost the exact same amount. So a lot of times with paternity testing, you they will do what's known as autosomal STR testing. So they will test short tandem repeats of autosomal DNA to get an idea of, is this person of the father or not? And so my search was stuck. It was at a standstill. There was nowhere to go without him being willing to take that test. And so a few years go by with nothing, no new breakthroughs, no possibilities. But Ancestry DNA started offering a new test, the one autosomal. that they have to this. Autosomal SNP testing. So with paternity testing, like the like court record stuff or like what you saw in Maury Povich, is he the father, you know, with uh, autosomal STR testing, different than the autosomal SNP testing, which is what you get through Ancestry.com. Nowadays, it used to not be that way, but that's what you get through 23andMe and MyHeritage and Family Finder on Family Tree DNA. So yeah. This day, it's called an autosomal DNA test. Now, unlike the Y chromosome DNA test, which only can check your male line directly, autosomal tests 
can check all of your lines of DNA and can compare that DNA to other people who have taken the test. So what he's showing here, that's actually from Ancestry.com. And based on the shared amount of what are called centimorgans of DNA, which are chains of common DNA. It's a lot to get into. It's all very technical, but it can estimate how closely you are related to another person. And so if you share a certain amount of centimorgans with a person, it can estimate, okay, this person's your aunt or uncle. This person's your half brother. This person's your full sibling. This person's probably a grandparent. This person's a first cousin once removed, whatever it might be. And so a few years ago, I took an autosomal DNA test, hoping that it would show me some close relatives that would help me narrow down some possibilities. And boy, did I ever find those possibilities. Immediately, I was able to get a better picture of my paternity. Because remember, though always pretty unlikely, there was always the possibility that the man who had taken the paternity test and failed, that his brother could be my father, but his father could also be my father, as could have his uncle, his father's brother. That's true. Since they all also shared Y chromosome DNA with me. But I was very quickly able to rule out uh, the father and uncle of the man who had taken the paternity test because I started getting all of these matches for people through that man's mother's side as well. So, so when he says that man's mother, I'm guessing he's saying the the guys that he the two brothers where the first one he thought was his father and then the older brother where he thinks is his father now where basically their mother he's matching the dna matches in her family tree which means that it can't be their father because their father wouldn't be matching any dna mat like if it was their father who was his father there would be no way that chris would be matching the dna matches through the the wife Basically, there's the two brothers, the father, and then the wife, and he's matching all the cousins through the wife's family. I hope that makes sense. It's so hard sometimes explaining this stuff without like an image in front of you. So, And so that meant that not only was I related to the father of these two brothers that went to school with my mom, but their mom. I was also related to their mother. So it had so to now be them. And this is what we use when we're doing cases to find, help adoptees find their biological family. Or even when, when I'm doing it to identify a uh, violent perpetrator of a crime or identify unknown human remains. We are literally building out the family trees of these matches and looking for where people got married. So if I was doing Chris's DNA for him, had he not gone through all this himself... When I got the DNA matches back, I would have seen one, he was probably matching all these Snowden matches. Then I would have noticed he was also matching these other matches through that mom's side. And well, where do those two big trees connect? Well, they connect with the man and the wife, which means that it has to be one of their descendants who then Chris descends from. Because the only people that that DNA could come from would be people that are descending from both that one family tree from the man and the woman. There were only two people on the entire planet who carried the Y DNA that could have been passed down to me as father and son. This man who had just failed the paternity test and his brother. Now through this whole process, I had actually gotten to know the sister to these two brothers that had gone to school with my mom and uh, found out she was willing to take an autosomal DNA test to see if there was any match, any relationship at all between me and, and she'd her. come up now she would come up as an aunt match to him if that is correct uh, by this point i've been through a y chromosome dna test that showed me i was wrong about who my father was once i had been through a paternity test that once again disappointed and told me i was wrong about who i thought my father so he's done y str testing autosomal str testing and autosomal snip testing father was and so this is really about the last chance I had to get any answers. And she agreed to do the test. We got together at a Panera, had her do the test. We put it in the mail and sent it out. And then the waiting game began again. Weeks go by. I think it was five or six weeks, something like that. And you can just, I mean, I'm almost 40 years old by this point. I'm just waiting on pins and needles for an answer. 
and I've been through disappointment so many times. And so I finally got the email right before dinner time one day that the results were in. I told everybody in the family, I sat down, my daughter, who was like 12 years old at the time, she came over and she sat next to me and she grabbed my arm. She knew what a big deal this was for me. I opened it up. She was my aunt. 40 years of not knowing and I finally knew. The oldest brother was my father. It took a little time to process, but you know, I had waited this long. I had thought through every scenario. I knew exactly how I wanted to handle this. I had already talked to the guy, had his email. So I sent him an email, showed him all the proof, laid out the whole story as I've just laid it out for all of you. And he basically blew me off. Started giving me all these excuses about why the test was wrong and how it wasn't possible and I won't get into too much of some of the stuff he said, but honestly, it was very, very disappointing, let's say, how he chose to respond to it all. And uh, so that meant not only was I I not really going to have a chance to get to know my dad, but there were also these three brothers that I had out there, three younger brothers that I had known a little something about by this point and um, found couple of them on Facebook, saw the similarities we had in appearance, even though we were half brothers, there, there was definitely a lot of similarities there. And I'd had by that point, people in the family tell me how one of the sons in particular, and I looked a lot alike. So ended up having a a phone conversation with the guy and he was very friendly on the phone to me, but through email, he basically was like, leave me alone you're nuts. I'm not your dad. Go away. Not how I'd hoped it would go. You know, uh, there's this TV show out there, um, where they use ancestry DNA to reunite people, parents and their long lost children. Relative race. If you haven't seen relative race, go check it out. I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. I guess he could technically be talking about like finding your roots or who do you think you are, but I'm pretty sure he's talking about relative race specifically. And that's a great show. And I think it's called long lost family. And Oh, long lost family. Yeah. Another show. Very. Yeah. Story after story of these happy endings. Mine wasn't like that. Mine doesn't have a happy ending. Um, I ended up reaching out to one of the brothers who was very cool about it said, hey, let's get together. And so me and two of my brothers met the next day at That's a Perkins. Cool. Had a great conversation. That was the one and only time I got to meet my youngest brother. He lives with my dad. I haven't haven't seen or talked to him since. I've never met the middle brother. Actually, I take that back. I met him once. We worked together briefly doing... Um, doing AT&T tech support for iPhones. We worked at the same place. I knew he was my brother. He had no clue I was his brother. I went over and said hi to him, shook his hand. And that's the only time I've ever met him, even though he only lives a few miles away from me. The, the other brother of those three is awesome. We've had a chance to meet. He lives in Alaska. Uh, So we haven't really been able to get close, get to know each other because of the distance. But I I got to go to his house. I got to meet his kids. His kids are awesome. Uh, He's got three kids and um, very cool. And he and I actually have a lot in common. We're the same height. We we actually look really similar. And um, here's, here's one of the crazy things about all this. And this is a little off the topic. But, you know, you ever wonder how some certain things about your life, are they inherited through DNA or are they things that you get because you were raised by a person. Well, I was not raised by my father. I've never met my father, even though I know who he is and he lives locally. I come to find out that he was really into history in high school. He ran track and cross country in high school. I ran track and cross country in high school. Nobody in my maternal line on my mother's side, nobody in my mom's family does that. But my dad did. 
And somehow I ended up doing the same thing. Found out he was on the school board at the school. Right out of high school, he got elected to the school board. Really into politics, just like I am. So a lot of those things, you know, just can't be explained that way. And it's kind of cool. He and his wife are really into genealogy, as I am. Now that, I I will say, I I kind of find it surprising if they're into genealogy to be so adamant that this is wrong. Granted, there are a few things I'm going to mention where there could be a possibility of, you know, something going on, but I'm going to wait till the end to, to mention that. Um, so I never got to meet him, but I did get to know one of my brothers a little bit, and I still hold out hope I'll get to know the other two as time goes on. Um, I've met members of the extended family. Unfortunately, two years ago, my paternal grandfather uh, died from lung cancer. I never got to meet him, and that's been hard for me. It's been hard to know that I was deprived of that relationship and that my paternal grandfather died without ever knowing I existed. My grandma's still alive. I got to meet her once, but she didn't know who I was, and I didn't know for sure at the time if she was my grandmother. I hold out hope that'll change someday, but I'm not optimistic about that. Um, The fact that I've been very open about this whole story about my story has rubbed some people in that family the wrong way, including the aunt who did the DNA test, who has since defriended me on Facebook and, and basically turned her back on me as well, because I was so open and honest about the fact that I was a part of that family. That's a shame. Um, I get it happens. And listen, I don't blame my father for something that happened, uh, when he was in high school. The fact that he never knew I existed is also not his fault. That's on my mom. And again, I don't hold her responsible for that. And listen, I don't share any of this to say that, oh, woe is me. I grew up without a dad. I didn't grow up without a dad. My grandfather was the best father I could have asked for. Uh, I didn't miss out on anything. I had an amazing family growing up, and I'm so grateful for the family that I have. Uh, and, And I am determined to be the best father that I can be to my children so they never have to know what it's like to grow up without dad in their life, without a dad who loves them and would do anything for them. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to set that right and to change that story for my kids. I wish it was different. I really do. I I wish my dad felt differently about all this. I wish I knew my grandma. I wish that I got to see my brothers more often. I will never stop hoping that changes. It probably won't. And I've accepted that. And I acknowledge that. But here's one of the cool things that has happened because of all of that. Because of my experience, because of the knowledge that I gained in how DNA works and how to interpret DNA and how to figure out relationships and autosomal DNA and centimorgans and all that stuff like that. I've had the opportunity twice now to help other people find out who their parents were, their biological parents, because of the knowledge that I gained in my own story. People that I was related to, that I ended up being able to find out exactly who their parents were. It's actually a very common theme with uh, us genealogy nuts, especially the genetic genealogy addicts, where once you kind of figure this out and you start matching other people or you have friends with that same stuff, it's kind of easy to go in and help them out. And as you do more and more, it becomes easier and easier. And I've, before I started doing search engine work and then law enforcement work using these same techniques, I started out first helping friends of mine or find genetic matches where they, you know, they didn't know their family and I'd help them figure it out. And just then it led to a lot more. And in both of those cases, it went differently. They were able to connect with their parents and they were able to have the story that I never got. So maybe that's why, maybe that's why I'm in this position. And if you're in that situation and you've got questions and you've never been able to figure out who your family is, let me know and I'll do what I can to help. Even if it's just offering advice, even if it's just letting you know how I dealt with all of this, I want to help. I want to use this thing that's been a negative in my life and turn it into positive for someone else. So I share this story to let you know 
that it's okay. It's okay to have those questions. It's okay to pursue answers and be okay with it not turning out the way that you hoped. I'm okay with it. I'm blessed. I'm incredibly blessed. I wouldn't trade my life for anything. Is it perfect? No. Is it the way I wanted it to go? No. And do I still hope it will change? Yeah. And if you're a praying person, I would invite you to pray that those things change in my life, that I have that opportunity to get to know my grandmother, that I have the opportunity to get to know my father. And if it doesn't, I'm okay with that. And I'm going to be the best dad and husband I can possibly be. And I will be forever grateful for the family I have. So thanks for letting me have this chance to share that story with you. And like I said, if you've got questions and you need guidance, reach out to me. Uh, vlogging through history at gmail.com. I'll put my contact info in the link below if you want to reach out and I'll do all I can to help you out. Thanks for checking this out. All right. Well, that was a, a good video. Um, he did go very in depth. I do have a couple of things that I do want to say. I think the first thing I want to say, and I kind of hinted at this before is there is another possibility going on in the sense that technically he hasn't a hundred percent confirmed it. I'd say it's like 99.5%. And basically what it is, is that there is the possibility his grandparents had another child, another son that they put up for adoption and none of the family members knew about, but also then, you know, knew his mom and just was in the same area. Do I think that's what happened? No, I think based on everything he has, I think it seems quite likely it's this, you know, the, the one brother, the older brother of that family that, you know, is his dad. There is one way for him at this point to fully confirm that. And that would be to get his, one of his half brothers to take a DNA test. And if this is correct, they will come up as a half brother um, am amount in the DNA the, what he was mentioning the centimorgans it, they'll match at that amount and then that would confirm it for sure because the way it is now where when he matched his aunt and he said oh well that confirms it because it has to be one of these two yeah technically it does because first of all you have the aunt matching as an aunt and then you also have you know all these cousins and stuff that are through the maternal side of the, those siblings but you still have that option of maybe there's just another brother out there that you didn't know about that maybe he's the father. But that's just like, a, that's just a, me being, you know, considering every possible little contradiction that could be there. Like I said, I don't think that's the case. I think based on everything he's got, it seems extremely likely that guy's his father. This is something I'm very uh, used to actually in terms of these searches not turning out that great. And to be completely honest, his is actually not that bad compared to others that I've helped work with. For one, he's actually befriended uh, some of his family members, especially a half sibling. For some folks, the whole biological family completely shuts them out and gives them absolutely nothing. So he definitely has a lot of benefit there. It is sad how the family is reacting to it. And I, it, I think a little surprising to me in the fact that, you know, his dad and his uh, aunt or I think it was either his dad and his dad's you know wife are in the genealogy so it'd make me think that oh well then if they're in the genealogy then maybe they kind of have a bit more of an idea I don't know I mean I would also think at this point it's probably pretty obvious he's not trying to get anything out of them so hopefully it isn't anything like that where they're worried you know oh well this guy's gonna you know come and say that he's our son and then try to take all our money or you know which is something that some people are worried about and whether or not there's a legal way to curb that I'm not 100% sure I'd imagine there's some sort of something you could do but you know it, it is kind of an unfortunate thing that that is the the case but, you know, the way that he's reacting with it, I think, is a very good way. I could feel, having hung out with Chris and, you know, spoken with him one on one, many different conversations, I feel like I could get a sense of um, emotion in a lot of it, what he was saying when he would say, you know, I've accepted that, that I understand it. It's like, you know, it's that sort of that twinge of pain of like, I understand and I accept it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm happy about it i definitely hope that things are able to change and chris is able to develop a relationship with his father and a relationship with his grandmother and possibly a relationship with other family members of his 
Um, you know, it's sad to hear too, that the aunt was angry at the way he handled it. But I will say when it comes to, you know, matters of family and the DNA testing and things like that, some family members just don't handle things well. I, in my experience, when I first started getting into genealogy, my, my obsession was with finding family members. And before I really would start emailing people, my big thing was I loved to find a phone number and I would cold call cousins. And I quickly learned, well, a little bit after a few calls, I, I learned that it wasn't a good idea because I had one relative that I contacted who was a cousin of mine. His family knew my family. In fact, my grandmother and his mom were like really good friends, apparently, like best of friends. And when I contacted him and I had this long conversation with him on the phone and he was so nice and everything seemed fine. And I told him, oh, I'd love to invite you to what, you know, the family trees I have online, all this stuff. And I sent him the invites and he calls me back and I pick up the phone and the guy that before was this really nice guy, all of a sudden was just such anger and just, you know, you better take all of this information off of the internet. You can't put this information up there. That's not, you know, that's illegal. And, you know, I'm going to sue you. And this was just because I had invited him into the family tree that I had built online. Just, you know, a genie.com, my family tree there. And hooked him in and because he saw all of this information because he was hooked into the tree so he could see the private names of the people within the family where, you know, if you know Jeannie, there are privacy filters. But he didn't know it and he was so angry about it and I guess was taken off guard and he literally threatened to sue me if I didn't take it down. And I mean, literally threatened to sue me. And then before he hung up the phone, told me to never contact him again. I never have. I did at one point try to reach out to a couple of his grandkids and was like, yeah, your grandpa was kind of a dick to me, but I, uh, I figured I'd contact you cause you might be interested in it. And I actually didn't research that branch of my family, uh, for a lot of years because I was worried that that whole branch would be like that. Cause unfortunately I will say there have been some cousins on that side of my family that I've met over the years that were not the most pleasant of people, I guess you could say. But either way, I think it just goes to show that you just never know how anyone's going to react. And when you're dealing with this kind of a thing of, are you my biological family? Are you my dad? Are you not? What is going on? That people just kind of get really worried and, you know, choked up or whatever and just, you know, just don't know what to do. So, you know, I kind of understand it, but it is it is unfortunate. But if you are doing your own search and you're trying to figure out how certain people in your genetic match list through autosomal DNA testing, like Ancestry or 23andMe, how they're actually related to you, be sure to check out this video of mine right here. Thank you to my Patreon patrons and YouTube members.